All right, so I'm on US 89 headed into, uh, well, this is actually the staircase right here, uh, the Grand Escalante Staircase uh, Monument. Uh, this is or the National Forest. This is all their land right here. So uh, beautiful views, as you can see, uh, just gorgeous. And then off in the distance, you can see some strong cliffs. I'm headed towards Horseshoe Bend. I don't really have time to explore around this area like I'd like to, just because of the simple fact that I forgot my debit card and had to backtrack. One, two, I'm very sore from hiking. Three, I look for a spot in Zion Park, as you saw earlier, to try to video or to try to uh, swim, and it was very cold. So, needless to say, I did not swim. Uh, but other than that. I'm, I'm just sore and tired and, and I really could use some rest. So I'm gonna try to find a hotel room. It uh, doesn't look like it's gonna be in Page, uh, Arizona, but maybe outside of Page, just cause the price will be less. So, uh, but nonetheless, that's what I'm doing and that's where I'm at. That's the current situation. I wanted to uh, also say too, you know, my theory this whole time has been that it, it, it just looks like at one time this whole area was underwater. And I kind of find out I'm not the only one that has that theory. Uh, they said 95, the little sign I was reading, it said 95 million years ago, uh, this land was underwater. Uh, now, I, you know, I guess they they have some way of proving it. Um, so I guess it's not a theory, but that's my theory because I don't have a way of proving it. And I would find it hard to believe that they got a way of proving it uh, just because of the simple fact it was 95 million years ago, really? That's a long time ago, but nonetheless, pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm riding out of uh, the Arizona 98 on my way to Monument Valley. It's just absolutely stunning views here again. Sorry, I got Hannibal Burris. He's cracking me up, too. That dude is hilarious. If you never looked up Hannibal Burris, do it. Anyway, it's raining in the desert. Um, again, I think it's because I'm here, but I'm actually glad it is because I just left Horseshoe Bend and again, I apologize deeply that I did not get any video. I will put a picture in the, uh, in the actual video whenever I make it, so that way you can see it because it was stunning. But anyway, it was packed full of people and also it's a long trek, not a long trek, but it's a pretty strenuous damn trek from the parking spot at Horseshoe Bend all the way to the actual bend itself so uh be prepared for that if you go also be prepared to be the only person that speaks english i i found one other uh one other person that speaks english that was it out of all the people that was there which i found very strange um the only other place i've ever been like that is uh disney world in orlando florida so but nonetheless uh, it was beautiful and just like this scenery here one thing I like about out here, though, is the fact that no matter what, no matter what happens, wherever you go, wherever you look, it it's always something different you can find. Um, just like that right there. I just happen to look at it. It looks like a face in the middle of a mountain. You know, so stuff like that is, is just everywhere. And the other thing I also noticed that, like, Zion, as I was kind of people watching, and I noticed everywhere you go, somebody's looking at something. And at first, I would turn around and look at what they're looking at to see if maybe they saw an animal or you know, some kind of mountain lion or something like that. But what I came to the conclusion is, is everybody's got their eyes set on one thing that's just mesmerizing them. And that's really cool. And the thing is, is there's so many different things to look at. So, um, pretty cool stuff. And uh, that's it. So, I'm on the way to Monument Valley, and I'll see you later. Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm still looking for a hotel room. Alright, so I'm coming into Monument Valley off of Highway 163. Uh, just went into a little restaurant, Seven Amigo. Tried to get tacos for Taco Tuesday. Placed my order, ate some stale chips that they had with the hottest salsa I've ever had. They should warn somebody for giving them free hot, hot, hot salsa. Anyway, and uh, then as I'm waiting tremendously amounts of time for my order and my empty drink, uh, they didn't tell me that, or I then overhear them saying something about the credit card machines broke. So, needless to say, uh, I didn't eat there. That was my that was my out. I was able to leave. <laughs> so.
So anyway, I'm on my way to Monument Valley. I really wanted to get a hotel room tonight. Um, it's now 7.20, and I just, uh, I'm not going to spend uh, that kind of money on a hotel room for just a few hours. So I guess I'm just going to have to find a spot um, to camp somewhere, and hopefully I can camp good. Tomorrow, though, I'm definitely getting a hotel. So that's the deal. As you can see, we're coming up on some pretty cool-looking structures in the mountains. Alright, so I am in Mexican Hat, Utah, and uh, just past Monument Valley, which was great. Um, there is a storm coming. That's it right there. And <clears throat> it's too late to get a hotel. I, you know, I'm kind of a cheap bastard when it comes to that. I'm, I'm not going to spend 70 or 60 or 80 dollars just for a couple hours. It's, you know, it's 815 now, so... Anyway, I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> what I am going to do is I'm going to find a road that's called Monkey Zeg Road. And then at the top of that is going to be BLM Land. And, uh, yeah, with the BLM Land, then I can just stay there. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. What's up, guys? So today is day 30. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure today's day 30. I think yesterday was day 29 whenever I counted it. Anyway, I'm waking up in the Valley of Gods, which is outside of Monument Valley, or probably part of Monument Valley, except for this part is owned by the BLM, Bureau of Land Management. Therefore, you're able to sleep on it without paying a hefty fee or doing any kind of craziness like that. You just pull off the road, make sure that you pack your trash out, just like you packed your trash in. So, yeah, I really enjoy BLM land, um, and I plan on making a donation to BLM if, uh, if that is a thing. So, cool deal. But nonetheless, um, I'm going through the Valley of the Gods loop here where I get to see all the different monuments or all the different rock formations and stuff like that. The Seven Sailors Balanced Rock um, and a couple other different ones that they have. Um, although I can't see sailors in there, um, the it, you know I don't know what kind of weed they had, but Colorado weed doesn't make you see it doesn't make you see sailors. So uh, anyway, but yeah, so this is just an absolutely beautiful area, and um, I couldn't think of a better place to wake up and see a sunrise as you can see. But this is it. My plan today is to go towards the Four Corners um, and just head east is my only plan. After the Four Corners, there's really nothing else on my list that I that are must-sees. Um, Route 66 is on there. Um, pick it up in Albuquerque, New Mexico if it's not too big of a deal. I'm not going to backtrack for it, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, Man-made stuff that I have seen on Route 66 and man-made stuff that I've seen um, just in general on this whole trip has yet to impress me nearly as much as I have uh, this stuff that just in nature. So um, I would much rather see those kind of things than uh, the man-made items. Plus, I'm, I'm running low on time. I'm trying to surprise Christy and be back home by Saturday. Um, and today's Wednesday, so um, I got to book it, you know. But nonetheless, here we are in the Valley of the Gods. And uh, check out the steer. Coming up on some steer here. And it's just absolutely phenomenal backdrop. So, till next time, peace. What's up, guys? So, today is day 30. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure today's day 30. I think yesterday was day 29, whenever I counted it. Anyway, I'm waking up in the Valley of Gods, which is outside of Monument Valley, or probably part of Monument Valley, except for this part is owned by the BLM, Bureau of Land Management. Therefore, you're able to sleep on it without paying a hefty fee or doing any kind of craziness like that. You just pull off the road, make sure that you pack your trash out, just like you packed your trash in. So yeah, I really enjoy BLM land, um, and I plan on making a donation to BLM if, uh, if that is a thing. So cool deal. But nonetheless, um, I'm going through the Valley of the Gods loop here where I get to see all the different monuments or all the different rock formations and stuff like that. The Seven Sailors Balanced Rock um, and a couple other different ones that they have. Um, although I can't see sailors in there, um, the it, you know I don't know what kind of weed they had, but Colorado weed doesn't make you see it doesn't make you see sailors. So uh, anyway, but yeah, so this is just an 
absolutely beautiful area and um, I couldn't think of a better place to wake up and see a sunrise as you can see but this is it my plan today is to go towards the four corners um, and just head east is my only plan after the four corners there's really nothing else on my list that I that are must sees um, route 66 is on there um, pick it up in Albuquerque New Mexico if it's not too big of a deal I'm not gonna backtrack for it and I'm gonna tell you why uh, man-made stuff that I have seen on Route 66 and man-made stuff that I've seen um, just in general on this whole trip has yet to impress me nearly as much as I have uh, this stuff that just in nature so um, I would much rather see those kind of things than uh, the man-made items plus I'm, I'm running low on time I'm trying to surprise Christy and be back home by Saturday um, and today's Wednesday, so um, I gotta book it, you know, but nonetheless here we are in the Valley of the Gods and uh, Check out the steer coming up on some steer here, and it's just absolutely phenomenal backdrop So till next time peace Good to know. All right, so I just passed into wonderful colorful Colorado and I'm headed towards the four corners and as I was sitting here riding along the road I was just sitting here thinking you know the next time that I take this trip I'm gonna take the trip again um, and it's just you can't I can't describe it a month even though I've been gone for a month today actually marks one month even though I've been gone for a month I can't describe uh, the amount of things that I know that I've missed I know that I've missed a lot and I'm still under a time crunch uh, which is crazy. I didn't think that I would be um, But I'm also ready to go home too. But anyway, I can't help but think uh, what kind of vehicle I would like to do this this in if I had it all to do over again And I think the vehicle that I've done it in so far is Absolutely perfect. The uh, forerunner has been a great vehicle uh, One reason why I chose Toyota is because Toyota is just they, they do what they're supposed to do. They work um, the last thing I want is to wake up on the side of a mountain and then, you know, the, the truck not perform or find myself in a situation where the truck's not going to be able to perform or it breaks or mechanical failure or something. So um, that's why I chose Toyota. Uh, but nonetheless, the 4Runner is a good vehicle. However, there are some things that I would change on it. Also, there were some different ways that I would equip it. But as far as just an all-inclusive vehicle um, that I think would be a really cool vehicle if it were mechanically sound to do this in is one of those, probably one of those ex uh, adventure vans or a well-equipped camper um, Tacoma. Um, I think that that would probably be the most ideal vehicle. Um, the only problem that I have with that is if you're stealth camping, which in some places uh, stealth camping is necessary in the bigger cities, and that's where you basically just park and sleep. Uh, <clears throat> in those places, it'd be a little bit harder if you have a setup like that, I would imagine, just because everybody knows kind of what you're doing. But then again, it might even be easier. I don't know. But nonetheless, those are the vehicles. Now, as far as the, the real big campers and the real big expedition vehicles, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have one of those. They're too big, and you can't take them as many places off-road. As far as the off-roading that I've done, I think that you could do pretty much all of it in a Tacoma. Um, well, you could do all of it in a Tacoma. Now, as far as doing it in a one of those vans, I don't know. I don't know if you could do it in one of those vans or not. Uh, but nonetheless, that would be the ideal situation. Probably the biggest that I would go would be a 2500, like maybe a diesel 2500, either a Dodge or a Chevy. Um, and then with one of those real nice camper setups on the back of one of those But I don't know that I would even go that heavy because that is a really heavy vehicle um, To try to go off-road because again, um, I've done a lot of off-roading and I wish I could have done more um, I would have liked to have spent a little bit more time around Moab and I would like to have spent a little bit more time exploring some trails But nonetheless the off-roading that I have done I think that it would have been easily capable in a Tacoma You may have been able to do it in a 2500 um, and the only thing is I say about the 2500 is it be, it'd just be so damn big going through some of the tight passes that I've gone through but other than that um, the the vehicle I've chosen the forerunner has been a perfect vehicle had I'd have a rooftop tent it would have been even more perfect and I think that would have made the uh, made the trip ten times better so unfortunately Smitty built did not want to uh, sponsor me with a tent so yeah so that's that's it right there
right, so I just left the Four Corners Monument. Uh, pretty cool little deal. It, you know, really ain't much to it. Four uh, little corners, slab of concrete. But anyway, uh, paid five dollars to the Navajo Nation to go see it. You welcome, Navajo Nation. Um, now I'm on my way to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I'm going to hook up with 40 slash 66. Um, I'm going to get the truck serviced um, at a Toyota shop, hopefully somewhere near Albuquerque. And uh, other than that, that's about it. Um, I just looked at the map. I am one day and three hours away from home. So that uh, would be, to me, 27 hours. I'm going to round that up to 30 hours. I hope to be home by Saturday. Um, that would be ideal. And hopefully I can make it. It is Wednesday, like I said. Um, but I am going to try to get a uh, hotel room tonight so I can get some real good rest. And then after that, I'm just going to straight book it. Um, once you get out here, not out here, there's still plenty to see as you see here. Uh, but once you once you get past New Mexico, I mean, there really isn't, really isn't much to see. Um, or, you know, there might be. I just, I've seen a good bit of it uh, living in Texas. So, um, but nonetheless, uh, that's about it. So, yeah, that's the current situation. Basically, on my way home. All right, so I'm headed towards Albuquerque in uh, New Mexico here. And I was just sitting here thinking, like, if you look off in the distance, those are pretty high mountains. The elevation that I'm at is 7,000 feet. That's strong. Um, Canyon Largo is what that sign just said. But anyway, so 7,000 feet. I mean, that's crazy. And there's still mountains. What is the highest point west of the Mississippi? All right, so I just stopped into the All-American uh, Toyota here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. They were kind enough to get me in and get me out. No appointment necessary. And I'm back on the road and what felt like probably only about an hour or so. What's up? Yo, so I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I stayed at the Best Western last night, which is by far probably one of the best hotel stays I've ever had, really. I was upgraded to a jacuzzi suite, which was sweet. I was able to sit down, relax, chill, um, drink a few beers, uh, get my ribs to stop hurting and my collarbone to stop hurting with some good rest and sleep on a, a good, clean mattress. So that was nice. Um, the other thing is... Uh, you know, I came to the realization that's the last hotel room I'm going to be staying at on this trip, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, other than that, right now I'm going to the Classic Cuts in order to get my hair cut, and then uh, from there I will be headed east. Oh, i got to stop by and see all the Breaking Bad stuff, supposedly. That's what Christy wants me to do, so that's what I'm going to do. Take pictures of it for and all that good stuff. But other than that, we're headed east, baby. Um, I think I may stop by the big blue hole thing too in Santa Rosa, so stay tuned Alright, so I'm leaving the classic cuts barbershop right here in Albuquerque, New Mexico And I think they did a pretty good job uh, It's nice to go to a barber and get a pretty decent job done I'm fixing to head on to Central, go up 60 or go up Central, which basically is Route 66 And I'm going to take that all the way out east um, hopefully come across a couple cool little things I'll shoot up on video um, other than that I'm in a hurry to get home so that's where I'm headed and I will holler at you later Beep. so I'm riding down route 66 and I don't know if you can hear it But whenever you ride down Route 66, you can hear the uh, America the Beautiful play on the ripples of the, of the road. I think that was it back there. Um, y you can't really, <laughs> maybe it's my tires, you can't really hear uh, distinctively the song, but uh, it's there, which is pretty cool. So yeah, Route 66, New Mexico.
about 65 miles outside of Amarillo, Texas. Just went through uh, <clears throat> Route 66 on New Mexico near the Blue Swallow Motel. I don't know what the little name of the town is. I stopped at Dell's restaurant, had a nice uh, burrito with uh, taco, and uh, it was pretty good. It's pretty good. It, it kind of felt weird ordering a Mexican food from a place like that. Felt like I need to be ordering a steak or something like that. Uh, but I saved the steak because I'm going to be stopping in Amarillo to eat at the Texas Steak Ranch, uh, the famous, where you get the big steak or whatever uh, if you eat it all. I will not be partaking in that challenge. Um, look at all the bugs on the windshield. Unreal. I didn't have that many whenever I was traveling off-road, I guess because I wasn't doing 85 miles an hour, but nonetheless, that's the current situation. It is pretty out here. Texas is uh, where I moved to South Carolina from, so um, I'm familiar with the landscape out here a little bit. Uh, not so much West Texas, which is where I'm at, but you got mountains over there, you got plains and, and hills, and yeah, so a little bit of everything, but nonetheless, I'm making good timing on the way home. Pretty interesting to note there are no more mountains we're straight flat land now straight flat land kind of crazy because I feel like I just came over a mountain but now not so much What's up? So today is day 32. Um, it is the, I think the 13th or something like that. Uh, anyway, I am riding down I-40 on paved roads out of Amarillo, Texas, headed back home. I'm kind of in a hurry to get home because I got a few things I got to do before I go to bike week. And uh, but other than that, and I'm and I'm ready to go home. So. Other than that, last night I stopped at the uh, the Big Texan uh, Steak Ranch, which was very good, I might add. Very good steak. Um, no, I did not get the 72 ounces of steak. I didn't, no. I didn't even attempt it. There's no way. Uh, 12 was good for me. So, anyway, so I got that. And uh, then from there, I actually found a spot. I come to find out BLM land is not... Um, not real popular here in Texas. There's only uh, one registered spot, and I think that's close to the public from what I was reading. So, uh, what I was able to find though on this cool little app, if you Google free campsites near me, this little, uh, not an app, but this website comes up, and uh, and I was able to find a little spot on there. It's actually just a travel center in Amarillo, across the street though from a Flying J, and uh, a couple other things. So, uh, really cool little spot. Had nice restrooms, everything like that. Had all my amenities right there. So I rearranged the truck. Everything's fitting in there, perfect. And uh, I was able to uh, sleep with very minimal moving of things, and uh, and I was comfortable. So uh, good deal there. So now I'm on the way back um, <clears throat> tonight. We'll find a place to camp, and if I if I need to, um, hopefully. No, yeah, I'll, I'll find a place to camp tonight, and hopefully tomorrow I'll be back home. So, other than that, we're winding down. There really ain't much scenery to show you other than flat lands. When they said this shit's flat, this shit is flat. There ain't nothing out here. So, it is what it is. But I love it. Texas is definitely a cool place. Um, this is where I lived at before South Carolina, so, um, you know, I'm somewhat familiar with it. But, um, you know, never been up to the Panhandle, which is where I'm at now. Should be crossing into Oklahoma. I'll probably intertwine on Route 66 a couple more times um, before it splits off and goes towards Illinois. So, it's what it is. Current situation. Peace. Alright, so I'm not too far into Arkansas. Arkansas. 
Arkansas. And uh, yeah, I'm really appreciating the scenery now, back in the southeast style scenery, with green and trees and, and hills and stuff like that. So that's always cool to see. Uh, side note, AT&T sucks everywhere, everywhere. I'm on 40 and they still suck. So don't get AT&T, get Verizon. That seems to be the only carrier, even though you know they're assholes too. They're all they all just screw you over any which way they can. But anyway, that's a side rant. Um, I'm heading back home. I'm about 12 hours from home now, and I'm getting pretty damn excited. So is Christy. I text her and let her know I was 12 hours away, and she's all kind of stoked. So still planning on making it by tomorrow, and I should uh, should be there. Um, I'll probably stop driving today somewhere around uh, seven, eight o'clock tonight. Um, it's currently 1.25, uh, so that gives me about six hours to drive tomorrow, and that's kind of ideal. That's where I wanted to be at, so that way I can wake up early and be home. Look, there's mountains. Oh, my God. Mountains again. After miles in the plains. Anyway, those mountains ain't nothing compared to the western mountains, are they? So, that's the current situation. Peace. Alright, so here I am in Conway, Arkansas, and I don't know if you guys remember, uh, if you've been watching all the videos, um, I stopped in Ponca City, Oklahoma and ate at Brahms, and if you remember whenever I ate at Brahms, I said that Brahms is one of the things that I miss from Texas along with Chicken Express. Well, I found a Chicken Express off of Interstate 40 in Conway, Arkansas, so guess where we're going? Chicken Express. You know, it's the little things. I'm a simple kind of guy, so it's the little things that really make me uh, happy. But anyway, nonetheless, I'm making my way back home still and uh, making good time at it. So. What's up, guys? So it is uh, day, let's see, 31, 2, or 3, I think day 33. Yeah, um, it's been a couple couple days since I left, but here's the good news. I am roughly three hours away from home. I am in Atlanta, the big city of, and I'm back in the southeast. I'm back in the south. I'm back where, uh, where I'm from, and I'm back where the drivers drive like shit. I've been all across the United States. The worst drivers are in the southeast by far. It starts in Arkansas. Goes all the way up to I think North Carolina. Uh, don't know what it is, it, but that's that's exactly what it is. They just they, everybody in the southeast drives like shit. So, nonetheless, um, I'm on my way home and I'm excited about it. So uh, stay tuned for the video whenever I get home. All right, so you know I've showed you the rest of the uh, the U.S. So I only feel that it's proper that. I show you the little piece that I call home. This is Lexington, South Carolina. We are on Long's Pond Road, which is the road that runs beside where I live at. Uh, this right over here on the left-hand side is the high school that I went to high school at. This is Lexington High School. Um, this is the ball field that they didn't have when I went there. Um, that is the technology center where I took a couple classes in uh, mechanical repair, various different things like that. Uh, you know, as this trip comes to an end, it's kind of a bittersweet deal because although I'm very homesick, um, you know, I kind of uh, am upset in a way that the end of the trip means the end of uh, the, the freedom that I had while I was on the road. You see, what we forget in life is the fact that we're not put here to just sit and do the mundane things that we end up doing, which is going to work, uh, whatever your work schedule is, and not having enough time to really get out and enjoy the world. And one thing that I've been able to do on this trip, um, it seems, is I've been able to inspire folks to, you know, put everything aside and, and just get out and explore your surroundings and enjoy it and embrace everything that you have. Um, and that's one thing one thing that it's taught me is that money is not as important as we think that it is so 
Um, I do want to thank everybody for following along with the journey. I want to thank everybody who, you know, has commented and who's, you know, uh, shown their different levels of uh, excitement for the whole journey and everything like that. Uh, you know, throughout the journey, even though I went on the road alone, I never really was alone through YouTube and through the uh, Toyota4Runner.org as well as the Expedition Portal. Um, I've had tons of people with me, so to speak. So um, it's it's really been pretty cool, um, and I really have, have enjoyed talking to each and every one of the people that have reached out to me. Um, I still continue to enjoy talking to them. Um, you know, everybody's always got different questions, and and I don't mind answering them. So um, yeah, so that's it. Um, I'm now at home, and we're gonna go and find Christy. And see what she's doing. She's probably over here taking care of these horses. And then I'm going to videotape the dog's reaction. So stay tuned. Christy's going to let the dogs out for the first time. They haven't seen me in over 30 days. We're going to see what they do. You hear him going crazy. Storm. Storm. Storm's deaf. She's old as dirt. She can't hear. <laughs> Pumba. Pumbaa, come here, boy. <laughs>